Interest rates unchanged at 7.25%. The rupee lost 1.8% against the dollar in its deepest plunge in more than a month. For more on this, we're joined by Anil Gupta, the chair in global strategy and entrepreneurs at the Smith School of Business at the University of Maryland. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Pleasure to be here, Michelle. Thank you. So what are the factors behind the declining rupee? I think the single biggest factor behind the declining rupee is the current account deficit. Uh, the, uh, I mean, you know, that's number one. And second, of course, uh, as the uh, uh, U.S. Fed begins to tighten the easy monetary policy, uh, money is flowing back from emerging markets back to the U.S., uh, which means that money isn't flooding into India. And uh, if money isn't flooding into India, you know, the rupee is uh, no longer in uh, the demand that it was, and so the rupee becomes weaker. So I think uh, it's the trade deficit which leads to current account deficit. Uh, that's number one. And then the U.S. Fed policy. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned the U.S. because the rupee hit a record low, a 61 to 21 to the dollar on July 8th. That's when the Federal Reserve hinted that it may start to wind down the stimulus. So explain the connection between what the U.S. Fed does with regards to its monetary policy and how that impacts the rupee's value. Yeah, I mean, actually, I'm not, you know, looking just, uh, for example, at the last month, because in the short term, there can be a number of factors uh, that can cause fluctuations uh, in currency valuations. But if you look, for example, from the beginning of this year, you know, if you look at, you know, the last six, nine months, uh, the... Um, uh, in general, uh, in fact, emerging market currencies have been dropping, uh, and India, of course, has dropped uh, significantly more than most other big emerging market uh, currencies. Uh, and actually, it's during this particular period uh, that, has, that the Fed has indicated that it will start tightening, uh, in fact, the monetary policy in the United States. Uh, but still, you know, I don't think that's the big factor. Really, the big factor uh, behind the fall of the rupee, uh, the depreciation of the rupee, really are internal problems within India, uh, which have to do with trade deficit, uh, which leads to a current account deficit. Well, the RBI on Tuesday also lowered its forecast for India's economic growth for the current fiscal year to 5.5 percent. That's right. From 5.7 percent. What's your take on this? Yeah. Is there hope to get further growth spurred? Uh, I think, uh, yes, there is hope. But, you know, just to, in fact, look at what the Reserve Bank uh, apparently is trying to do is that it's trying to balance three different considerations. And it has to, to, to really uh, decide uh, what the priority should be. And it, I think it has uh, chosen the right priority. But the three considerations are the, the chosen priority right now, which is the current account deficit. Uh, number two is inflation. Inflation right now in India is uh, fairly low, I mean, meaning 4.8, 4.9%. And if you look mm -hmm. at the last two years, uh, it's actually you know, come down significantly from in, an inflation rate of about 9%. So inflation is not uh, as a big a factor right now. But the third uh, factor that the Reserve Bank always tries to keep in mind is economic growth. And the economic growth has slowed down. Uh, but I think right now, uh, uh, for very good reasons, uh, the Reserve Bank is focusing on the current account deficit uh, and the value of the rupee. Uh, but uh, in fact, uh, the Reserve Bank governor in his statement today already hinted uh, that for the rest of the current fiscal year, uh, the remaining eight months or so, uh, the, the, the bank is, uh, in fact, quite likely to factor in uh, uh, growth considerations, uh, which should be interpreted as uh, a signaling that probably uh, there would be, uh, that interest rates may come down uh, over the next uh, six to eight months. Well, one of the concerns that India has been having is that foreign, film, foreign firms are pulling out of India. What do you think the Indian government can be doing to get more foreign investment? Yeah, I think, I mean, if we uh, look at uh, foreign firms pulling out, you know, you know we saw uh, the two steel companies, uh, Arcelor and Posco, announce uh, essentially cancellation of two projects. Uh, the, but, you know, they hadn't uh, sunk in a whole lot of money in those two projects, so that was more... Uh, uh, essentially a change in intentions, but still one would look at that as pulling out. Uh, I think the, 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 the big problem in, you know, in, in terms of FDI in India, and, and I should add that if we look at FDI to GDP ratio, incoming FDI to GDP ratio in India, it's very low. It's uh, lower than Brazil. It's much lower than China. Uh, so India does uh, face, and I think what it is is that while the, the central government policies actually have become uh, increasingly more friendly, 
uh, to multinational companies, uh, inbound FDI, but the bureaucracy and the red tape uh, is a nightmare. And it's a, it's a nightmare at the central level, but it can become mm -hmm. even worse uh, at the state level. So I think, uh, you know, there's clearly both matter. You, you do need good policies. I think uh, the policies are getting better and better. Right. But you also need, in fact, you know, the ease of doing business on which India doesn't come out looking very good. Hmm. Bureaucracy. That's a very good point. We're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much, Anil Gupta, the Chair Pleasure. in Global Strategy and Entrepreneurship at the Smith School.